Do you have PVA glue, tins of beans, and a coat hanger lying around your house? Do you also have a dungeon master for a friend who has described a particular scenario to you, and you've also realized you've forgotten their birthday? Then boy, do I have a solution for you. Build that techno witch house you've always wanted. I mean, they've needed. It's actually pretty easy. Watch and find out. I'm PVA Blood, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Hit the ground running by cooking yourself some refried beans. The second you have some empty tins of beans, stop cooking the refried beans and make yourself a witch's abode. Grab some insulation foam and a scary knife. You can see here are the uh, tins of bean. Peel off the paper. Give you a sense of scale with some bean tins. Slice up the insulation foam into some slices that are long and then chop them up. I want some odd sized cubes. Cubes obtained, I've put them into a spare tin I've got here and I'm going to apply gravel to the inside of the tin. Liberally. This is just from the garden. Put a lid on and then proceed to give those cubes the absolute business. Lots of business. What this is essentially doing is turning them from cubes into stones. The gravel is going to round off the edges and give them a nice rough pattern. I've got an egg timer here, got it from $2 from an op shop, and I pulled it apart. I want those gears inside. Yeah. First time for everything. Okay, balsa wood sticks. You can get these from most art shops, you can get them from hardware stores. A single length is about twice the diameter of the tin, so just cut enough of them in half until you can cover when into the tin. Just going to use some icy pole sticks here, which you can also buy from craft stores or from icy poles, and hot gluing them together. So that's going to uh, become the top of this sort of castle thing. You can just chop them up with scissors. Balsa wood is really soft. You can use your fingernail to indent it, but I'm going to use this barbecue cleaner, just some met uh, metal wires here to rough up that texture. I'll put some hot glue inside and then put a few of these gravel stones inside. So I'm adding weight to the base. The rest of the stones are spared and are released into the wild. I'm also going to make a door. I've got one of those uh, gears which I found off the floor when it exploded. And I'm just gluing it onto these balsa wood pieces. Trimming the edges. And I'm also going to rough them up as well. And then slice one of those balsa wood strands to make some supporting struts. This is going to be a door. I'm going to put a couple of indentations in there just using a piece of wire. Where these are the uh, structural bolts would be. And that's it. Fantasy door. Hot glue it on. Got all those cubes from earlier. Or cubes, rectangles odd shapes, just hot glue them on. I'm starting to do this around the door and then expanding outwards. One piece at a time until all of it's covered. Now hindsight being 2020, I should have primed this black first. It would have just made things a bit easier later on with the painting, but it doesn't matter if you miss that step. You can also see I've added some extra pieces of balsa wood to imply that this is part of a larger collapsed tower. I've also made a trap door, so there'd be a way for models to hypothetically reach that top level, other than scaling the external uh, walls themselves. I used a toothpick to make the hinge and just glued it all in place. I found some actually quite cheap MDF hobby kits from this company called U Gears. I was skeptical at first, but the price point was low enough. I took the plunge and I was actually pleasantly surprised. I assembled part of this clock and then snapped off the stand. You can see there's a clear break there, simply because I wanted the clock to be orientated differently when I attach it to this tower. I've also then attached a piece of chain from some cheap costume jewelry I got from an op shop. So it's gonna be supporting this clock off the top. I then glued on some of these gears onto the top half of this tower. And you can see I also repeated the MDF cover there on the other tin. Hot glue just holds everything in place. It's a super easy process. You can see the spring from inside of that egg timer. Any of those gears to stick it on. This is where the witch works on her projects. So lots of techno magic happening. 
piece of cardboard is going to form the backing of the windows and some toothpicks are going to be the bars. Just push them into one of the foam blocks which I've glued underneath and then proceed to block up the rest of the top half. Okay, it's looking decent. Now, how are these two pieces going to be connected? Why magic, of course. So this is going to be a powerful magic user. She's probably got some non-Euclidean geometry happening inside. The D&D players are going to be having all sorts of adventures in here. So the outside of this can be pretty wacky. I'm going to start off by cutting a triangle out of some uh, cereal box card and hot gluing on top to be the basic frame for the archway. I've got some more of those balsa wood pieces which I'm also going to texture up, glue to that card and cut them to size. Straightforward process, just using scissors and hot glue. Easy. I've built another door, similar process to earlier, and I've traced it on another piece of cereal box card. I want this card to be at an angle and the door to sort of be sort of sitting in it at a slightly off angle. Just looking at it you can tell that the angles don't match up. This was sort of non-proper design. This architecture is a little bit wrong. I then made some roof out of some recycled cardboard. This is from an old wine box. I mean of course it is. This is me. And I've attached on some other tchotchkes from that MDF kit. I've just attached the chain here. Punching a hole here, going to stick a piece of dowel to make a chimney and another piece of that cardboard to be a chimney cover. Really simple stuff, super cozy and cute looking. Look at that, it looks sweet! Coat hanger, totally underrated material for building. It's really strong but it's bendable if you put the effort in. I'm going to demonstrate just how reliable this material can be. So I'm cutting some bendy pieces here as long as you've got a little foot that's in there. It's a basic L shape with a little tip which is going to fit into the hole and then a little foot which is going to actually support the weight on the bottom half. So you can see I'm going to drill at least three holes here which the wire will fit into. It's that simple. Now whilst it's being held in place by the top and half part being connected, I'm just going to connect some extra struts just to hold it all together and I'm going to use different thickness wire to make it look a little bit more like magical electricity and suspended in this electricity are going to be some of those extra gears from the MDF kit. When they're all hot glued in place I then come along with some PVA glue. PVA glue is flexible but it'll also help blend in the glue and the wire, make it look more organic. I also made a handrail from a wine stopper. I was thinking about what story this tower could tell and I thought that if I put the impression that there was walls attached to it, that this tower was perhaps at one point part of a larger castle, it would look a lot cooler. So I'm just using some pieces from some old foam mats and the leftover cubes just to create a collapsed wall section. I then came in with some PVA glue with a little bit of paint in it, jabbed it in the top there and sprinkled some sand in just to help convey the wear and tear of time. I then added some more paint and glue to protect the foam from the following steps. Prime the wire and I'm also going to be priming this bottom section. So I hit it first with black paint and then I came in from a starting up high pointing low so from a downward direction with white paint. You could come at this with grey but I find starting with black and then coming in with a white really accentuates the shadows. I then dry brush all the stone sections with grey. Just a dry brush. Big brush, old brush, cheap brush, excellent. I did literally clap. I then hit everything with some brown wash, including the roof. Yay! Dry brush white. Dry pastels. This is how I make texturing powder. All of these colors get used. This is for mold. This is for the dust you might find in the webway. This is for conventional rust. Really useful stuff, just put it directly into a blender and try not to breathe it in. You really don't want to breathe the stuff in. I don't know how bad it would be, but I cannot imagine that it's good for your little pink internal organs. It looks really cool. And it's easy. Now this is a rust mix made using brown, black, orange. I'm going to apply this to the metal. 
We've got the greens, I'm going to be applying it to the stonework for mold and moss. And then some red, using it a little bit less than the green, but it's also for organic growth and just colour to the stone. I'm applying it directly to the surfaces using a dry brush. Both colours, just to add some variation to the stonework. Then I'm applying my brown wash directly on top of that. It's a messy process, but it's going to give a nice organic look. Repeated the process for the top half and the bottom half, and then dry brush it all with white. Black paint goes between the bars, just to... It's a window, you know. It's what you do, black paint between the bars. Then I've got some Retributor armor. It's just the gold that I've got the most of, so that's what I'm using. Any gold paint will do. Hitting those bars, hitting all the gears and the chains and the handrails, all the metal areas with the exception of the roof. Then following that with just some black wash, Nam oil will do, or you can make your own like I do. This is actually the same cardboard I use for the windows and for the framework of the walls. It's just spray painted some of it black. I'm then coming in with a regular old hobby knife here and I'm just slicing it at an angle and that's going to be the base of the piece. Knife it up. Straightforward. Don't cut your fingers off. When that's done, I just hit it with some more spray paint, just like before, black and then a little bit of white, so the grey colours will match. In my head, I'm thinking that the stone will sort of decay and mix in with the dirt, so I'd want a grey base. Then I'm just going to use some hot glue, I mean of course I am, that's what I'm using the most on this project, and attaching them together. Any areas where you might find a bit of a big gap between the base and the cardboard, hit it with some hot glue. When that's done, PVA glue. And I'm going to sprinkle some sand. Now to be clear, I did bake this sand in the oven before applying it to the piece. It's a good idea to make sure there's no living material in it. I then painted this area grey and then dry brushed it white. When that was all done, came in with some brown wash. I painted the earth and a little bit on the stonework and the doors. You know, just a bit of dirt builds up over time. Brown wash. Got my rust weathering powder and apply it with much gusto over that top roof section. Now you might think, aren't you maybe going a little bit overboard? No, I'm going to be hitting this with some spray varnish. Now you can use clear if you want it to look like it's wet, maybe it's been raining, but I'm going to go for a clear with a matte finish so it looks dry. The spray will dampen down the colours but it'll also blow off a lot of the excess. So you can see here, it's a lot less noticeable after you apply the varnish. Now, this means that you can handle this and you're not gonna end up with this stuff, the weathering powder all over your fingers. Now that it's done, I'm gonna be applying some flock. Now this flock I made myself using just some old sponge with green ink in a blender. For a gun, what the hell? Yeah, throw that in as well. That's flock. Easy. PVA glue, I'm just applying it in some of these cracks. Any areas I think where it might be sensible for greenery to grow or to hide mistakes. That's what you use flock for. Make it look intentional. Just put some flock in there. Problem solved. Just a little bit more wash down the bottom there. And I'm coming in with the clear varnish again just to help seal in the flock. Make it a bit sturdier during gameplay. back to the electrical gears, prime them white, and then come in with this electric blue. Just all of those wires, blue. And the gears, gold. Straightforward. When that's dry, I'm coming in with Gilliman Blue Glaze. Now all the concave sections of the bends in the wire hit with an area of this glaze. You don't have to be too precise. I mean, this is rapidly arcing, sparking electrical discharge. You know, it's unstable magic. So it doesn't matter if you really make a mess, but just try to stick with the plan. The concave areas get the glaze. When it's dry, then dry brush the convex, the outside of the bends, with some white. And that's it. These are the higher areas of electrical discharge. This thing, this stuff, it's, it's just gone nuts, mate. Can you imagine gears, electricity? It's fun stuff. 
and then hit that with well gloss varnish it's just going to make the light bounce a little bit more fun stuff when i was a child i played a lot of sport totally regret it i should have just been in dungeons and dragons this is so my jam Look, these are three separate pieces. That way the dungeon master can introduce them incrementally if they want to. Start with the base, maybe, you know, the players make camp in there. Maybe the electrical magic starts up later. The top half then appears. Build a narrative, slowly reveal it. Or you can then approach this modularly. Maybe in one game, you're gonna have those electrical gears appear as an effect or a, a trap or, you know, it's, it's modular. It's easy to store, it's easy to transport very cool now you might be thinking it's not too stable i'm about to clearly demonstrate that it is stable but there's nothing stopping you from just using that same hot glue to glue this all as a single piece this would look pretty fun on any desk any gaming den would look quite at home with this in the corner look at those angles you can see that it's looking old but they're still energized if you wanted to you could add some object source lighting at those contact points just dry brush a little bit of the blue but i wanted this to be modular and to be used in different scenarios to decide it against it i've got my pocket marine on display to give a sense of scale as well as my most recent previous project at this point the delightful weeping cherub and gore halo there was a guardsman there as well I'm pretty happy with this as my first venture into straight up fantasy terrain. I'm usually uh, a big fan of sci-fi, but this was delightful. Maybe I should actually get into some Age of Sigma. What do you think? Reach out in the comments, ask some questions, want to make some friends.